Hallelujah. I love River Bible School. I tell you, anyone that has gone through that, we always testify. You always see the difference in them. But so fortunately, some people, they go through and the school don't go through them. <laughs> it's a perfect place to be, to build your life. Amen. So our first person today that we are calling on to speak to us today is uh, our sister Teddy. <laughs> Uh, praise God. Amen. How is everyone today, this beautiful Sunday morning? <laughs> awesome. Um, we just heard the testimonies a few minutes ago, and for anyone who has ever gone outreaching, if you're a Bible school student or if you're not, and you've used the soul winning script, there's one question we always ask them. Um, if you're to die right now, are you sure without a shadow of a doubt that you will go to heaven? Well, I want to kind of paraphrase that question. So I want to ask you and just keep it in your mind. If you are to die right now, are you sure without a shadow of a doubt that whatever you have will go with you to heaven? So just have that in your head and give me the answer. No, or you can answer yourself later. <laughs> um, I would like to share a story. I don't know if it's a story, but it's something that Jesus, we all know that Jesus used parables to teach people because I think it made understanding the ways of the spirit easier. So I would like to read one of those. It's in Luke chapter 12. Um, if you would like, you can go with me there. Okay, I, <laughs> a minute. Yeah, Luke chapter 12, verse 14. Um, and it reads, Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an, an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his positions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain, of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought, he, thought, he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crop. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grains and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then, then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. And before Pastor was started the service, she was telling of how good God, how good God has been to her. And it's not about what you have or the things that you possess. At the end of the day, it's about lifting up the name of Jesus. And here you can clearly see, like on my, in my Bible, it says the parable of the rich fool. I think it's a really big pity to be rich and foolish at the same time. It's a very big loss. Because people will look at you and from the outside you look, you know, you have everything everyone would desire. Fancy car, nice house. But in your head, you're a fool. And which one is worse? To have things but not even know what to do with them. And in the Bible, it tells us who is a fool. A fool has said in his heart that there is no God. So a fool is actually someone who thinks at the end of the day, it's only them. But you as a believer, you know that there is a God. The same God that saved you is in you. And there is no way you can live life as a fool. And when, died, when Jesus died on the cross, he made you rich and he became poor for us. So... Knowing that you are rich, you cannot be a fool at the same time because it will be, I would, I would say it will be a pity for what Jesus did for us on the cross. Um, I would like us to go to another scripture in Acts, Acts 2.45.
Actually, we can go back uh, uh, one chapter before, 244, and it reads, All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. Every day, they continued to, to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with, with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, it's, you know, sometimes if you look at our church, for example, and you think 18 years, I think, yes, you, the church has been here 18 years. And you would, I would say expect, but hope that the church would grow in multitudes, you know. But here we see that what one of the keys for church to grow, one of the keys that God adds to the church, the saved, it's, yes, going to the streets is, is important. Go and preach the gospel to, the, to every creature and, and, and proclaim the, the year of the Lord and proclaim the gospel of Jesus. But at the same time, it's not all about giving them you can give them the spiritual food. That is important. But here we see that as believers, you're supposed to share among each other. You're supposed to give whatever you need among each other. You know, like being a blessing is, is one way people would see the Jesus in you. Because it's not all about the words you say. It's not Because words, words can enter into one ear and come out of the other. But something that you do would stick with someone for years and years. And it will not, they will not forget that. Like... You stretching out your hand, you being that person who, who uh, how can I say, meet their needs. It's something that will stick with them for a long time. And this is equal for believers and non-believers. Because sometimes, you know, in the church, you say, oh, love your neighbor. Yeah, we hug and kiss and all that stuff. But when you get out of the store, some of you don't even know what the other person is going through. And it's really sad because if you say that someone is your brother, then you should treat them. You should... You should care for them as, as one because it's not all about the church gathering on Sunday, but afterwards, how do you fellowship? How do you treat each other? How, do you, how are you a blessing to your brother and your sister? That is really important. And I would like us, not like us, but I would like to say like, when you give, have a revelation. And I don't mean, when I, mean, when I say revelation, I don't mean you know, waiting to sit down and hearing the audible voice of God saying, thou give this to that, or I don't know, something of that kind. A revelation comes out of a relationship, because what is revelation? Revelation is unveiling something, and how is something unveiled? Is when you have sat down, or when you have searched for something, and it becomes open to you. For each one of you who is born again, how, how, was the re how did you get the revelation of being born again? It's because before you heard that word, I'm sure deep down inside of you there was a yearning. There was a searching for, for God or for, for something to fill that void in you. So it's the same thing with giving. Without a revelation, I'm sorry, but your giving is in vain. Without knowing why you're giving into something, without you knowing why you're putting that money in that envelope here, it's all in vain. It's just putting money in a, in a basket. But if you don't know that you're giving to the house of God and you're giving to the kingdom, that is is more powerful, you know? And uh, I know, I, I, I believe everyone here knows the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And when I read that story, for me it was, it was it's, it's sad but funny at the same time. I don't know, for me that's how I, <laughs> <laughs> it was for me. Because these people, they saw other members of the church giving and they said, okay, let's go and sell half, not even all of it. Let's sell and we'll give half of what we got from the, from the sale. Now they came and they brought it and they thought they were fooling, not fooling, but they thought they were doing something because others were doing it, but they didn't really understand the reason. And for that, they mocked the Holy Spirit and what happened? They end up dying. So it's the same thing with you. Like when you give or when you, when you make yourself available towards something, it's my prayer that you understand. Like, I pray that it's unveiled to you why you're doing this. Because when you, when you, know the, when you have the revelation of this, it will not be about, oh, now they're asking for our money. Okay, you're giving money, but if you understand why you're giving that money, it will be easier. It will, you will not even think about it anymore. Or if they ask for, okay, church, we need this. We need people to come help paint the church. Or we need people to go visit this person. That is, you're giving your time. You won't think, oh, why? Like, I have better things to do. But if you understand that you're sowing into the kingdom of heaven, of heaven, 
that is a greater, I think it's a greater satisfaction for all of us. And I pray that whatever you do, do ask God for, to reveal to you why you're doing it. And maybe sometimes, you know, we say um, you, you give in faith. Faith is not just that tingling feeling you feel and then you're jumping up, dancing around, or that tingling feeling you feel and then you throw money in the basket. That is not faith, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're just, you're being hyped up to do something that you don't understand why. And it's the same thing with, with, God, with, with giving towards the church or giving in whatever array that you have. Because um, you need to understand, like, how has God spoken and told you to be a blessing? Because not every single, every single one of us is unique. And the way we will be a blessing is also kind of uh, assigned because according to your willingness, according to your obedience, according to where you are in faith, like my, the way I will bless someone or the way I will be a blessing is not the same way that uh, brother or prophet Amos will be, <laughs> would be a blessing, you know. So <laughs> you, 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 need to, you need to get that revelation so that when you actually be a blessing, you understand this is what God has given me. This is what I am able to give, you know. I am personally saying this because I'm, right now I'm a student and financially, this could be a confession, a testimony, I don't know. <laughs> but as a student, I might not be financially able at this time to be a blessing or to sow, but there are other very many ways I can be a blessing. There is my time, there is my ability, there is whatever I'm learning. I can sow that into the kingdom. You know, the, the kingdom of God is not just church people. The kingdom of God is so big. Like there's so many areas and every single one of us here is in those, you know, the Bible says we are the body and every, the body has different parts. The finger what the hand can do is very different from what the leg can do. So I, I might be the leg. Maybe my job is to, to, to go somewhere. And you might be the hand to carry something. So understand who you are in Christ. And in that way, understand how you can be a blessing to the church. Because it's, if you, it's not about copying. Because honestly, if you copy someone, it's, it's sad. Because we, are, we don't even look alike. We don't even like the same things. We are not... We are brought into, art, into this art to do diff things differently, but it's still the same spirit. It's still the same goal, which is the kingdom of heaven. So it's my prayer, really, that today, as you become, a, as you be a blessing, as you sow into the kingdom, that you understand your originality. You understand you are, your revelation towards being a blessing in the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Um, one last scripture, it's in Acts 4.32. Are we all there? Yeah. <laughs> and it reads, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions were his home. His, sorry, okay, this English is becoming a bit... <laughs> <laughs> no one claimed that any of his possessions were his own but they shared everything they had. Here we see that, you know, sometimes we, ex not expect, but we, we believe God for things. And unfortunately, most time we believe God for things for ourselves. That is okay because I believe God has called everyone to, you know, to prosper and to, and to grow. But, when you pray for blessing, when you pray for God to increase you, I pray that you understand that at the end of it all, you have to be a believer. You have to be believers with one, with one heart and, and mind. And this heart I'm talking about is not the, the physical heart. I'm talking about the heart of God. To be one in heart, in the spirit. Because in this way, Whatever, you, your success will be your neighbor's success or your growth will be your neighbor's growth because at the end of the day, it is very unfortunate to see one believer this level and the other believer at a lower level. I don't, maybe I don't understand the dynamics. It could be about their faith with God. It could be, it could be about how they have uh, yielded themselves to God. But you, as I, as, was, as I was saying before, you has a revelation about how you can be a blessing 
Be the person who will be able to uplift the person who is down. Be the one person who understands that you are one in the body of Christ. And that way, it, it will be amazing to see how all believers rise up. Because at the end of the day, we all need to rise up. Because if one person rise up and 20 people are still down, I'm sorry, but there's no way you're going, you know? And uh, according to the time, it's almost done, and I'm actually <laughs> done as well. <laughs> So lastly, I would just say, um, as the rich fool uh, was hoarding things, and when he died, unfortunately, those things didn't go with, him, with them. So if you go back to the question I asked you before, if you're to die right now, which I am not saying you are because God is going to bless you with long and healthy lives, you know? Yeah. But when you do die at age 120 or whatever... <laughs> Are you sure without a shadow of a doubt that the things that you possess will go with you? If the answer is yes, I pray that you re-examine yourself. And if the answer is no, those things that you know are not going to go to heaven with you, what are you doing with them? That's it. Um, yeah. Okay, let's welcome Ibrahim all the way from Turkey. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's fine. Jesus know you. <laughs> How are you? Thank God. Wow. Everyone is smiling. That's a good, th good thing. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, what actually God put on my heart is something uh, very important for every believer. Because all of us come to church and we start. And we start with God. We start so, so happy. God's going to bless you. Yes! God, God's going to increase you. Oh my God, yeah, of course. But the moment that you receive the promise, that you take the promise from God, and the time you enter the promised land, there is time. It's a bath. Here many people fail. Here many pe people doesn't understand what's happening. Doesn't understand that God will take you through time, prepare you for the end. This time is a preparation. It's a preparation time. But because we don't talk uh, God's language, because um, some doesn't pray, some doesn't read the Bible, they open the Bible only in church, they forgot uh, where is their... Bible already, uh, they doesn't know which shelf, the second, first, I don't, I'm not really sure, let me use the app. And some of them use the app to read the Bible, and they have only three chapters every day. So you will finish these three chapters. You will not understand what's happening, but you will finish these chapters. So what we don't understand what God is really doing, and we miss God. What God is actually, God's heart is to use you in a position that you will have the greatest impact. God will not put you somewhere, like if you are good in football, okay, go play basketball. <laughs> I don't know, they will give you the ball, please. <laughs> you will use it wrong, right? So, God always prepare you. It's like what happened to David. God anointed him, anointed him for, for a long, like before he became a king. He anointed him to be a king. After he got anointed, Samuel, he poured the anointing on him. What happened? He went to take care of his fathership. Right? Right? Of course. So we need to understand what God is doing. What God, uh, and it is different. Everyone can speak about how good is our God and how merciful is our God and how awesome our God. It just use positive word, it will be okay, you know. Just use positive word, it will be like, oh, that's God. But there is something. That's what happened with Israel people. They know he is good and he will deliver them. But he was telling his ways to Moses while he was showing his acts to Israel people. They were not in relationship with God. So the Israel people were complaining, failed many times, they were turning around the mountain, and it ended up like 11 days, 
took many, many years. Right? Okay. And this time, many people, the preparation time, and instead of, we don't know it's a preparation, we call it the problems. We call it, we have many problems. It's not a problems, it's God's preparation for you. The bear and the lion, was it a problem or a prepara uh, preparation? It was a preparation. And that's what's happening. And many, many times, we ask God we, we, to do stuff for us. It should not happen. That's why we feel sometimes fail and we feel alone. That's what actually I want to talk about. This time, until you enter the promised land, we feel alone. We ask from people stuff. We expect stuff. We do stuff. And we, we expect result doesn't come. And we feel failure. First verse I want to read, it's Psalm 142, verse number four. He said, okay, I found it. Look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares. Nobody cares for my soul. You know many times we expect people to take the position of God? We expect from people to do stuff that they cannot do? I mean, let's be honest. Raise up your hand if you have something you want and you do not get it, or you have a problem. Raise up your hand. Wow, be honest. <laughs> okay, the one who did not lift up their hands, just ask them, they will find a solution for a problem. <laughs> <laughs> they doesn't have any. <laughs> yeah. So what's happened here? David, he was in a cave. And there was many men around him. If you go to Book of Kings, you will find out that God for, uh, sent to him 400 tough men. Even with that, David, what did he say? I feel alone. He felt alone. You know, maybe your family is around you, around you. Many people next to you. But it's different between people are with you and between you are feeling supported. It's totally different. Someone encouraging you, someone stay with you, hear you. We complain so many times that nobody understands us. We say that. And we look at people. Hopefully, they will understand what we are going through. I mean, sometimes we just look, look at them just to ask us, how are you? I'll say, I'm, I feel so bad. But they doesn't ask. They doesn't ask. And when he told God, and by the way, that's a psalm. That, that's mean he, it's a song. It's in the cave. So what God did for him, he sent him 400 tough men. But... What David, he understood later, but what David, he did not recognize at that time, and what we should recognize when we, when, when we say we have many problems, that these are problems, and this 400 man put, them, put him on the throne. These problems will take you to the destiny that God wants to put you in. Amen. Amen. God is going to use you in the things that you can do. God will not use you in the places that you cannot do. Is that right? So God will take you in, in preparation. And we feel that we are alone. I cannot see anybody supporting me. But if you go to the, to the same psalm after that, he got it. I cried, uh, number five, I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my, refuge, my portion in the land of the living. We ask people to take the place of God, but they cannot do it. God is our refuge. You want to feel good? Go to God. You want to feel happy? Go to God. You have nothing good outside of God. You expect people to take the position of God. They are not God. So we need to understand who God is really is, and we know who, what he can give. So when you go and win church, when you stand up and pastors say receive, you will know what to receive. Amen? Amen. 
And this many times, he, we, we feel alone, and we feel that we are, uh, nobody cares. Nobody really cares. You know, in the book of Daniel, there's a story about three men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. There is something, I've read it about, uh, while I'm reading the story, there's something very, very important. When they enter into the fire, okay, the king looked at them from outside, okay, and he saw four people. The fourth, he looks like the son of God, okay? People saw that Jesus, or God, let's say, let's use the same word, God was with them. But question, after that, they did not say that these are three men, they saw him with him. When we, you are inside the problem, sometimes you don't see Jesus that he's next to you. But people can see that the glory of God is with you and, and it's covering you. Amen. 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 They can see the result. After that, the king, he wrote song about God. But what is interesting is that's, that's how we should live. And every problem we face, that if you read before them, they saw God with them before even they entered the fire. They say, we believe God, he can rescue us. And if he don't, we, we believe in God. Now our God, we will not worship your God. Say, they saw God with them before the problem. And that's that what, uh, what, what also Paul said, that all things work for good. Amen? They knew it. They knew it. And we, we should know the uh, personality of God is not evil. It's not bad, you know? When, when something bad faces you, pray about it. Don't complain. Do you know what's a compl between, uh, the problem between complaining and praying? There is difference. There is difference that you declare your faith. Complaining is running to God and just cry out. I feel stupid. <laughs> yeah. And, and we just repeat what the devil tells us. Do you know the devil will call you always by your weakness? He'll always call you by your weakness. And he will bring the weakness that it was in the past and he will throw it again in, in your face. And what we do? We repeat it. Yeah, say, I'm stupid. My life is terrible. Yeah, yeah, prophesy more, 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 more. Say, say more. <laughs> say more. If you can't beat up yourself. And we encourage the devil to do that. But different between praying that after that, Holy Spirit will give you the answer. When you listen to him, will give you the answer. Nobody told David that God is, is your refuge. The Holy Spirit told him is his refuge, right? And he understood it because of that. Amen. So, when you go through time, tough time, you need to change your mentality. Because going up, like everyone came to church, huh? there was two ways to come. Elevator or the <laughs> stairs. Uh huh. Did anyone fly in here? <laughs> like landed from the window or something? I, I, I missed somebody? Oh, no, thank God. Okay. <laughs> Superman is an, in another church. <laughs> so you came out maybe on the stairs you went step by step right on the elevator floor by floor is going up why do you expect God will take you and throw you in the destiny that he wants to, to put you in because to be honest the pressure that you will have in the place that God wants to use you if he put you now you will be crushed you will be crushed Who's, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I did not expect you to be excited about this one. Okay, awesome. Amazing. <laughs> so, this is, we should understand that Jesus is with us, even in the trouble. Look at your neighbor and tell him Jesus is with you. Look to another neighbor that you are ignoring since morning. I tell him, Jesus is with you also. <laughs> Amen. I just in the end want to remind you 
I want to remind you, they told me three minutes, so I want to remind you of something uh, that Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Amen. Amen. God that he delivered three people from the fire, he can do it for you. God who, who shut the lion mouth, he can do it for you. Who, the, the God that he defeated death, he can do it also for you because he did it already for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Awesome. 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 Hallelujah. Awesome. Man, I'm blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You know, though I didn't teach these people in uh, Bible school, I didn't teach them like, uh, you know, physically, but spiritually I was with my husband when they were being taught. <laughs> yeah, to become one. Yeah, so every one of you I taught you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. I am really blessed. I tell you, these guys are awesome. They are really awesome. I tell you, I enjoyed the first woman. I'm proud of you, Teddy. Wow. Ibrahim. Wow. 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 Oh, well, we are not in any competition. If not, I will draw the whole thing. I know I will take the side of women anyways. So. <laughs> Awesome. I like that. It was quite encouraging, you know. I really like that. You know, sometimes you just need to hear some of this stuff, you know. Sometimes you are so beaten by circumstances. You just need to hear something. They are simple. It's just simple, but powerful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I will call the next person now. My God. This woman. This young lady. Man, she's very hot. Oh hey, my God. When I say hot, oh my God. You got to hear her speak. I tell you, she's so on fire for Jesus. I tell you, now the, I tell you, the demons are screaming now. They are, they, are, they, are, they are scared now because something's going to fall on them right away. Amen. Oh, let's call Tamar. Wow, big crowd. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> okay. We can go to, <clears throat> sorry, Luke chapter 10. So let's read. <laughs> okay, Luke 10. Okay, Luke 10, 25. So let's read. It says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, <clears throat> and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt, shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Wait, let me just stop here. Um, if you look up the uh, word neighbor, um, in the physical, it means somebody who lives right next to you. It means somebody who is really close to you. So this is what you will call a neighbor. Like, if, if you live in a house, I will be the person living next to you. You know, so it, it kind of shows um, a closeness with you and the person next to you. So after it says, <clears throat> and Jesus answering said, a certain man, man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. So notice in this verse that um, the person is half dead, meaning he's not 
fully alive. So he's almost on his way to die. So let's continue to read. It says, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So who is a priest? Okay, so a priest is uh, the man that stands between God and the people. So it's the person that, first of all, will offer the sacrifices on behalf of the people. And then second of all, it's the person that he's like a mediator. So for us, our high priest is Jesus. But let's say in this time, so a priest was, um, especially in the Old Testament, it was somebody, because Jesus was not yet come, so he was the person God God chose him. So he will be the one standing uh in between the people. So uh, let's say to take their sins away when he will offer the sacrifice. So here it says, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So notice that he saw him. It's not like he didn't see him. So like he's walking, imagine yourself, you're walking, and then you see somebody, it's almost about to die. So in this case, the priest, the one who's supposed to stand in between the people, the one who's supposed to be a mediator, passed by, didn't even look at the person. And next it says, and likewise a Levite, when he was on the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Once again, who was a Levite? The Levite were the people that um, they made the law. Yeah. (laughs) The ones that they made the law. So you, you can say he was also kind of like a priest or like a scribe. So once again, a righteous man, a person that um, he's the one supposed to be there for the people. This person also saw the person wounded, and he just walked by the other side. He didn't. Look, if you say that you care about a person, it's not just by words. Your actions have to show it. You cannot say that, yeah, I'm a high priest. I'm the one It's standing there for the people. And then when you see a person is in need, and when you see the person is wounded, you will just walk by the other side. So in the Bible, it says, like, it calls you a hypocrite because it means you don't really care for the person. You only care about the title or only about your position as a high priest. <clears throat> So then continuing says, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. So who was the Samaritan? The Samaritan were the ones that um, they don't have anything to do with the Jews. Maybe the person that was walking was a Jew because it's in Jerusalem. (laughs) Okay, maybe it's just... (laughs) Maybe I'm just saying it, but maybe he could have been a Jew, you know, but... Either way, in the Bible it says the Samaritans and the Jews don't have any dealings with each other. Why? Because uh, when the Samaritans wanted to vote, uh, <laughs> the, the Jews did not allow them. So they kind of revolted against the Jews. So here you see that the Samaritan, the person that they don't have any dealing with the Jew, when he saw the person on the floor, he had compassion on him. What does it mean to have compassion on somebody? It means that when you see they're hurting you will have mercy on the person. When you see that they're hurt, you will love on that person. You know, so a person who doesn't have anything to do with you is the person who's coming and showing mercy on you. You know, the person that you would otherwise think, oh, this person cannot talk to me. You know, I'm I'm too high for this person. No, but he was the one, even though they don't have anything to do with each other. And mostly you will see in the Bible, it's mainly the Samaritan was always the one either receiving from Jesus or he was the one who was helping. The person that had nothing to do with the Jews was always the one that was receiving the most from God. So don't just look down on the person, you know, because you don't know. This person might be the one that's receiving the most from God, you know. So later on it says, And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. So here you see that love is in action. You see that it's not just about your title, but it's about what you show. And what you show will mainly talk about what kind of a person are you, you know. It's not about the words, but it's about um, the, the outward will be an evidence of what's going on on the inside, you know. So, and on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pants and gave them to the host and said to him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? So if I were to ask you, which of these three do you think was a neighbor? Which of these three do you think was the one that 
really when he says I, um, has compassion really means it and shows it. What if God, when he saw us in those times when we were down, he just passed by us? What if when we, we were the ones crying out to God, he just closed his eye, you know, because he's God, he's too holy, you know, he cannot talk to us, he's too, he's too, he's too good for us, you know, he, he cannot say anything to us, and we have to be like crushed on the ground, you know, but the Samaritan shows a picture of God, the Samaritan shows a per, a, how God himself is, that when, when he will see you in that stage, he, why did Jesus oppose the, um, the re religious people so much why was he not because that he wants to show them in a bad way but he did show them in a bad way because they, they, this is they, they they say there's something but they're actually something else you know they portray themselves to be amazing righteous people but yet they're not you know their heart is far god even said your heart is far from me you will praise me with your lips but your heart is far away from me you know so let's go to another verse um, okay. Uh, let's go to Luke 7, 36. So this is another verse. Okay, let's just read it. Um, and one of the Pharisees de desired him that he would eat with him. And when he went into the Pharisee's house... And sat down to meet. So, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears. Why would a woman who does, who has never seen this person, go and fall at his feet and cry? Why would would you ever see somebody, if you're walking on the road, will just fall down on their knees in front of you and will cry? No, but because she had a revelation that this is Jesus. She had a revelation. And I believe in this verse, why she's crying is because she knows she's a sinner. It's because she knows that everything in her past, it was a sin. And now when she comes before Jesus, this is why she's crying. And this is why she's pouring out the ointment in front of him. So, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what matter of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. So notice that he didn't say it out loud. He said it within himself. But as we know in the Bible, Jesus says, I know, I know, the, I know your heart. I'm the one who knows the heart of man. So even if you don't, you might not say it out loud, but... Everything you think in your heart, everything that you have in your heart, don't worry. Jesus already knows. He already sees it, and he already knows it. You cannot hide it from him, you know. But that's why it's so important to change your heart. That's why it's important that even when you yourself will see that thing in your heart, that you will take it out, and then you will let God renew you. So later when we read, it says, And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. So notice here that Jesus didn't tell the Pharisee himself. He told one of his disciples. So kind of not directly to the Pharisee, but he knows that it's for him already, you know. <laughs> like, I don't need to say I'm talking about you, but, you know, if I'm talking generally, whoever will take it will take it, you know. So, um, and he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. So there's a huge difference, right? There's one, it's like 500. There's one, it's 50. Um, and then when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Can you answer that? Okay, good. <laughs> Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he had said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto him, Simon, seest see thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou givest me no water for my feet. And Jesus is going to his house. Like he's the one who's supposed to greet him. He's the one who's supposed to give him food. He's the one who's supposed to, you know, welcome him, kiss him. He's the one who's supposed to show him the warmth, you know. But it, he didn't do it. Like even if it's his house, even if he's the one who invited, who, that Jesus came to his house, he didn't do any of these things. But it was actually the woman. And on top of it, they're complaining about it. You know, they're saying like, oh, she's, look at her. Like she, if, if he knew what kind of man she was, he would have never let her do that. 
you know? So it's sometimes you'll have people will be complaining about you. Like, you will see, like, maybe you know in your heart that this is, you know you're doing what God is, you know, you're going to God, but some other people will be complaining about that, you know? So don't worry. God knows everybody's hearts. So, and he turned to the, sorry. I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest, gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. So it's good when God will forgive you a lot. It's good when... When you see something in your life, don't run away from it. You know, when you see something in your life, this is an opportunity that God will, of course, he will forgive you. And this is where God will pour out his love in your heart. So don't, don't be afraid to face these challenges. Don't be afraid to even see yourself, to see your heart. You know, sometimes we see things, it's really not nice stuff, you know. But don't be afraid of that because God will take the ugly and he will make it beautiful. He will take whatever it's not good and he will put in what is good. You know, so... Don't worry. If you're forgiven much, you will be able, be, be able even to love much, you know, because if you have not received that love, so how can you give it out, you know? But first, you need to be able to have it, and then after that, you will be able to give it out. You know, it will be, it will just come naturally. Okay, God loves me, so I love you, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. So just one more thing. Um, when Jesus said that, uh, when Jesus told the people that I forgive you, go, go, and be, uh, go and be healed or go on your way. I have forgiven you. Yeah. Um, you will see that many times the Pharisees, they will manifest. They will say, who are you that you forgive sins? Who are you that you're blaspheming against God? Who do you think you are that you're talking like that about God? But if you will read in, okay, I did not write it here. Um, it's in Mark. Uh, let me see. One minute. Okay. <laughs> Okay, anyways, it's in, it's, in Mark. <laughs> it's in Mark. It's in the Bible, the New Testament. So <laughs> so he's, like, Jesus, when he wanted to show that truly he can forgive men, he said, he, he did it, okay, because if he forgives you, you don't really see it in the natural, right? You don't see that Jesus has forgiven me. You know it in your heart, but how can you prove that to somebody? How can you say to somebody that doesn't believe in Jesus, yeah, he forgave me, okay, so how, how can I believe that? You know, how can you show that to someone, you know? But Jesus, how he showed it was when he said, I will show you that I have the authority to uh, forgive men. He said to the man, be healed. And go on your way. And right away, the man got up and he was healed. So if he had that kind of authority to heal the person, then it means he had also that kind of authority to forgive the same person. Okay. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. Okay. Now I will call on Mr. Sam. Woo. I came to you today with a lot of greetings from the Church of Iraq. I'm just kidding. There's nothing. Okay. So let's... I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So... <laughs> who's ready to hear from me tonight? Uh, today, today, today. Oh my God. You are... By the way, that was a tricky question. You are in a big trouble if you want to hear from me. But if you want to hear from the Lord Jesus Christ, you are in the perfect place. If you want to hear from the Holy Spirit, it's the perfect time, perfect place. This question is not tricky this time. Who still have uh, promises from God or stuff he, you really believe in and it didn't happen yet? Only these people, this, why did they, always this side? Please help me with God. If you don't have, you know, ask, ask God to, to give you stuff to believe in because God always have a lot and there is nothing maximum with God. No matter what you reach, there is more with God. So don't worry. Uh, I want to talk today about when the promise delay. 
I think, I think most of us, we have this problem sometimes, you know? Yeah, we don't speak about it, you know, because we think, I don't want to discourage other people, you know? That's, we all have it, okay? We all have it. Uh, and I, le- um, I like David. David is the most honest person. You, you read Psalms, he say whatever he feel, you know. Why? Because he was telling this to God himself. You know, yes, it's written by the Holy Spirit, but he wasn't telling the people. He was telling God whatever he feel. So, most of us, we have this thing, like, we, and we ask, Lord, when this thing will, will come to pass? I'm believing you for, for years. And some of this stuff, I did not even think about it. You told me. You gave me this promise. But why it's not happening? I'm praying. I'm believing. I'm, I'm believing you. And it's for years and I don't see it. The, most, uh, the other problem is I see other people. This stuff come to their life. It's easy and smoothly. You know. And for me, I have to keep believe and keep believe and keep believe. And I don't see it. And one of the problems we face also, unfortunately, like in the Christian community, if the people know about your promises, they will come. Huh? It's been, uh, you know, it's been two years, it's been three years, it's been five, ten years. Why it didn't happen? We ask the wrong question. Always we ask why it did not happen, you know. And they put the pressure on you. The timing is not up to me or to you. The timing is up to God. So we have to wait. There is a great reward for people who are waiting. I don't know anybody will read a story of someone who will say, wow, this person born and his family was, let's say, uh, very rich, great. And then he just studied, finished, and his father gave him a lot of companies, and he was a successful person and died. Who will read the story of these people? But we read the, the story of people who really start, let's say, from zero or from nothing, and they change their life. There is difference between the life that God gives you or the life you have and the life you want to live, it's, it's different. Maybe you, you will ask how, how it's different. I will tell you, you know, uh, uh, there is many people, let's say, they born even blind. Like we have, uh, we have someone like um, from Egypt. He born blind, but he refused to live this kind of life. Other people, they will be maybe even begging in the street. This is the life that they have. But some people, they can choose the life you want to live. You know, I can educate myself. You know, this guy, he starts to just to listen. People read for him. And then he starts to learn how to read, you know, by touching. And then, you know, he said, I'm reading these French stories. But I don't feel it very nice. I like it. But I think there is more stuff hidden. I need to learn French. He traveled to France, he learned French, and then he started to read in that language to get everything. So then he, he decided, okay, like now I can even teach this stuff. And when he, when he went back from France to Egypt, you know, he started, to, he started to teach in universities that he never went to school even, ever, but he started teaching universities. You choose the life you, you want, but it's not easy. It's not easy. If someone... If someone tells you it's very easy, just believe God. Yeah, it is true. Just believe God. But this just is not, Lord, and say, press in. So we come, it's not, this is not press in, you know. You know, wait for the Lord. Okay. For how long? Waiting is really, it's waiting. By the way, there is I-N-G in the end. So it's, it's keep, you keep waiting. I love the, some, uh, I asked the Lord also th- this question. Why me? Why us? Most of us in this category, why us? There is other people, they just pray. They got, they got whatever they pray for. So why me? I have to wait. Why me? I have to wait for years. But because God, God wants you to be different than the others. God wants your story to be to be like um, tell for years and years and years and years we read in the bible about stories of about people it's like thousands years ago and we still we still talk about it and we still hear about it in different in different revelations because they pay the price they stayed with God I like I like the story of Hannah that's you know Samuel's mother uh 
it was it was hard to see the other you know her husband's wife you know get get kids get kids get kids and by the way the bible said god make her like this she had she don't have kids and she was she was waiting and waiting and keep she keep hearing ah where's your god ah why so but you know what she didn't give up and I know we said do not complain I will say something a little bit different you know complain but go to God and complain do not complain to others don't go complain say I'm stupid and something no 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 but God said Lord till when I should wait Lord you see me you know some some people they don't speak some people I see in the worship time I see tears coming this tears is a language God understand it and God really respect it sometimes while I'm worshiping you know like in the worship uh, team here I look I see people and sometimes I feel this is a holy realm here because the person is a cry I feel I feel it sometimes God really pay attention and and he have a special thing so even I turn my face I don't want to look because I feel it's very holy you know to just keep watching the person so yeah <laughs> and sometimes uh, anyway so but let's see but let's see what's happened you know you know Hannah like went she spent the time she talked she weep but in in the presence of God she stayed there until the Lord one day he heard her her prayer and he gave her someone let me tell you some of you maybe you say why I don't have kids till yet uh, till now or maybe why my dream is not happening yet because everyone have kids and their kids will be great people but your son or your dream will be like Samuel will change the country will change you know the nation so you have to wait maybe the thing you are carrying is big you know I got amazed when I hear you know the elephant the the female elephant get pregnant for like from two to uh, from two years to like uh, it's like 22 months to 25 months they said because what what she carry is big you know others they have like small you know you look at the rabbis like a lot I don't know See, seriously they have they said they said don't do this mistake bring female and male and female from rabbits you know you will have a lot but elephant will, will will take time so maybe the thing inside of you is big and huge what you are thinking you know, sorry what's the problem is what you are thinking I'm thinking it's only a child that I want from God but God no God see it's a savior for his people it's not just a child you know I prepare the best for you but there is a certain time that this child will come so I'm preparing you till that time will come and I will put this child in you or this dream in you you see but you don't know exactly how big let me be faster uh, my God so always always do not give up when the dreams or the the promises did not come to your life just go keep going by the way just I'm not saying just go in the presence of God go in the church because we see the people of God here they were going to the temple they just not just like pray at home come to church come worship him the best thing for me I think the best thing God really honored when your prayer when there's no answer for your prayer but you still go to God you know and you tell you know you know what you are good you are holy you worth ever, all my worship and if the promise come or not I will keep worshiping you God honor this kind of people this is God people the real one you know and I want to look to to another woman also like in the Bible you know the, the woman with the with infirmity spirit the infirm woman you know this woman was like was walking like this down you know when she is among people you cannot really see her because everybody's standing or even sitting and she will be like lower than everybody but the Bible said Jesus was there he saw her among all these people who come to worship but he saw her for 18 years he saw her he said come and he didn't tell her by the way unfortunately as a as a Christian community will say why she have infirmity spirit how it come no no let me know you know let's talk let's be honest why why you know of course she did something wrong Jesus did not ask Jesus did not judge Jesus come come here and then he said lose 
and he lost her and she stood up. She was the only one from all of them. She got the miracle and she got a greater miracle. For 18 years she was that. Instead of this is bad thing, it became a miracle in her life. Until today, we still speak and we will keep speaking about her. So maybe that's what God wants to do in your life. One of the problems that we will get when we wait and wait and wait for a long time. I'm talking about tears. I'm not talking about one month, two months. Yeah, you know. The problem is sometimes uh, uh, we will not have like, uh, I mean, our faith, like the gauge will, will be kind of down. I will believe for other stuff, but this thing, it's like, come on, it's been years, you know. And of course, you know, the enemy or the others will say, maybe, maybe you have a sin in your life. That's why it didn't happen. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's crazy stuff. Anyway, but when my, when, how can I wait for the Lord when I don't have enough faith? People say, just believe. But I'm still thinking, how can I just believe? Sometimes I'm not in that level. I don't have that great faith. What I want is something really big, something great. But my faith is not that much. You know, let, I hear something change my life, which is sometimes I don't have a great faith, but I still have a great God. Amen. He hear, he listen. When you talk to him, he listen. You know, sometimes you say, oh, I'm praying, I'm praying. God did not answer. But in, in the time of trouble, by the way, God always show up. You are belong to him. He always show up. He will change the situation. He will change everything like you think. So, uh, I like like this verse. He said, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear. It's not just about your if you have great faith. Some, sometimes, yes, you have. And sometimes you feel, I don't have it anymore. What can I do? Still go to God. Stay in his presence and tell him, I don't have this great faith. Help me. You know. Uh, so there is not much time. So let me just tell you quickly about one day, like when I was in, when I was in Iraq, I was coming back from the work. And my friend picked me up in his car. Uh, usually we will talk and joke, but his face was was different. And then the first thing um, he asked me, he said, when was the last time like you talked to your parents? I said, mm, two days ago. He said, okay, your dad in the hospital now. I said, what's happened? He said, he have like brain bleeding. I said, what does that mean? He said, I don't know, let's go now. So, so he took me to the hospital. You know, it's maybe it was 20 to 30 minutes, but it was like ages. Honestly, I was scared. I wasn't like, okay, I'm going to go and raise my dad from the, you know, from his sickness, whatever. No, I was, I was scared. I was afraid. I felt I'm losing my dad. By the way, at that time, I don't have good relationship with my dad. The only thing we talk is just say hi because we fight about everything, you know, <laughs> everything, everything. So anyway, I went there. I saw him and, uh, uh, and the first thing, I said hi as usual, but my dad did not answer. He was keep looking at me. My mom told me, identify yourself to him. Tell him who you are. I said, what do you mean? He said, he lost his memory. He cannot remember anything. He cannot even talk. He don't remember the language, you know, or something like that. So it was hard for me. I start to take my dad to the restroom. That was, that breaks me, you know. I remember, like, I said, okay, I was a kid, my dad taking me, but now I'm taking him. And I see him, this tough, strong man who I, who I always fight with him. He, he was very, he was very, like, um, he was very weak. Anyway, the, to make it very short, the, yeah, the, we asked the doctor. The doctor said he need to recover between three to six months. I said, well, he said, yes. And, uh, and anyway, like, do not try to remind him anything because this will give pressure. That night, uh, I stayed with him. At night, I was, I was, I was just putting my hands like, like close to his head because I don't want to wake him up. And I was praying. I prayed. I did not pray with faith, by the way. I have nothing. I felt I'm very weak at that time. I was just weeping. But I said, Lord, I'm not praying just to heal him, but give him a new mind. That when he come, like, when he get healed, even my relationship with him to be restored you know but I'm saying I wasn't like praying like this with faith in the name of Jesus I was pray with him, just with tears so anyway this three to six months it became the third day 
the third day, my dad, like, he started to, he started, like, he started walking, and, uh, 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 yeah, he started walk, and he remember, he remember the language. Unfortunately, he speak English, not Arabic at that time. I don't know why, but anyway, so, um, uh, and even, like, at that time, there is, there is one, uh, one doctor, you know, when, when he saw her, he was saying, hi, how are you? Like, he forgot that he is married, that I'm his son. And so he was trying with, he was trying with, the, with the doctor. I was so shy anyway. <laughs> but the fourth day, <laughs> that was so embarrassing. Anyway, the fourth day, the fourth day, the fourth day he started to speak to me. And uh, now he speaks Arabic in the fourth day. He said, tell your mom she don't have to come because she is tired every day she comes. And then I said, wow, so he can remember I'm his son now. And he remember my mom. That was a great thing, you know. The three to six months, it became like within, within one week, my dad left the hospital. Within 10 days, he was fully recovered. So God, hear your prayer. Even if you don't have that, wow, faith. Believe him. Believe he is great and he will do greater in your life. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, powerful. Delayed promise. My God. Hallelujah. Well, we have one more person. The last, but not the least. Because Jesus is still working. Amen. So let's call on Prophet Amos. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so grateful to God to be in front of you today. Uh, I was watching a businessman talking about the way he used some principles, uh, the way he used his mind just to build a very big business. And today, the man is a multimillionaire. So the man said he read a book and found some stuff inside a book, just began to apply those principles and became a very big man today. The man is still in, in life today. So I was touched by the story and I just begin to think about the mind. I begin to think about the mind and I said, if someone can read a book written by a man and get inspiration from the book, how could be someone who can read the book we call the Bible, the word of God, the mind of God, the will of God, so I was just thinking about it. And as I was thinking, I began to, to try to read some stuff about the mind. And uh, I began to understand that there is a difference between having something and knowing also the value of what you have. There is also a difference between having something and knowing how to use it. And I begin to see like the mind of a man is so powerful. And if a man can use his mind effectively, so he can be able to achieve anything he wants. Amen. Amen. So I begin to, to check my Bible and I read the book of Romans chapter, Romans chapter 12. Second verse, the Bible says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that is what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. So uh, when I read, I read this passage, I begin to see the way the Lord wants us to apply the mind. The Lord doesn't want us to be ignorant. The Lord wants us to use our mind very well. 
So we cannot use our mind according to information we have. Because even when we think, we think according to information we have, according to the knowledge we have, and uh, according to the way we see life. So when I, I begin to, to think about renewing the mind, renewing the mind, I, I thought again about another uh, scriptures, which is in the Old Testament, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. I'm going to read it. This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So when uh, I read again this, I begin to understand the ways of God. I begin to understand the formula, like a formula, the way the Lord wants us like to use the Bible, to read it day and night, to meditate on the word, his word, so that we can do things according to what is written. We can even, and in the beginning, the, the, the Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. So, I see Reading the word and speaking the word is different. When you begin to read the word, in a certain dimension, the word will come so real, real to you and you will be speaking it. And also, when I, uh, I begin to see the word of God the way it is, I begin to think, because having knowledge is good. But having the understanding is different. Because when you have an understanding of something, then you can do it well. And even having the mind, we all have minds. But understanding the way the mind works will also help you to use it well. Because if you have a gun and you don't know well how to use it well, I think it will not save you. But if you, you know how the gun is built, the structure of the gun, and how to use it, it can help so much. So I, I want to talk about something, according, uh, uh, something about the mind. When we were growing up, like when you were a kid, let me give. Let me go straight because I will not take a lot of time. A lot of time. Let me give an example of glory. If we 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 take glory and send glory to China. If glory live lives in China for five years, after five years, when we will meet glory, glory will be speaking Chinese, and also glory will be behaving like Chinese people. Are you agree with me? Okay. So what happened when you were a kid? Your subconscious mind is opened and you can receive any information. The language, uh, the culture, and all of that. And after having the conscious, something else will be developing in you. But the, the behavior of everyone's depends on the nature of the person and also the environment. So, the way the mind works, the mind is so powerful. The, the way the mind works is so amazing. The mind has two parts, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. In the conscious mind is a place where you have like perception, imagination, reason, all of that. And the subconscious mind is like a quiet place, but a very powerful part of your mind. Because your behavior is dictated by your subconscious mind. And as I was saying, 
the habit will take place in your subconscious mind after a lot of repetitions. Because like I said, if glory find himself like uh, in China after five years, a lot of repetition of the language, the culture will make glory behave like Chinese people. Do you get what I'm, what I'm saying? So now when the Bible is talking about reading the Bible, reading, meditating on it, thinking on it, and talking about the word is so powerful. Because, you know, um, when we read the Bible, we discover a lot of things inside. The Bible is the mind of God. And we were created by God. And I remember even in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, the Lord took the dust and made a man. Even the material the Lord used just to create a man, he created the material with his word. And in the book of John, chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was in the beginning. Everything was made by the word. So when I see myself, I see the dust, I see the origin. Because, you know, the truth is very important. The truth is the original information about someone or something. So I begin to see the truth about myself in the word. So the Lord spoke the word and created the dust. And the dust now, the Lord breathed in the dust here I am. I'm a man. And the Lord is sending me back to the word to meditate on the word because the word is the program that I, I, have, I have to live in. Because I am, I am the word. So I am created in the image of God. And whatever God is saying, that's what I am. I depend not on what I live or what I eat, but I depend also in the word of God. Hallelujah. So I begin to see the level of the impact of the word of God in my life. And here I want to, to, to encourage everybody to, to take the new step of reading the, the word of God. Because um, someone can say, I read the Bible like five times, ten times. But, you know, we were programmed in the subconscious mind according to uh, our parents, according to the environment where we were born. And it took time. It took time just to be who we are now. So to download, like if I can take an, an example, downloading a new program. It will take time. It will take time. So don't get discouraged. But I want to advise you to be reading the Bible this year in another level. I want, I want everybody to take a step, a decision, because, you know, a lot of things in life we cannot do because we don't decide. As long as you don't decide to do something, you will not do it, even if it's a small thing. But when you decide, when you decide, your will of deciding will help you to focus on something. And Reading the Bible day and night, day and night, meditating on it, thinking about the word. Because we were designed to live by laws. In the Bible, you will find laws and principles of life. If you want to succeed, to do anything you can do, you need the word. You need principles which God established in this world to succeed. So when your mind begins to function in the frequency of the word of God, even your desires will be led by the word, and you will be in harmony. I want to talk about two things before to finish. I want to talk about self-image and harmony. Self-image is the way you see yourself. And the way you see yourself will determine the level of your success in everything you do. The difference between a leader and follower is just one word, attitude. And your self-image will produce an attitude. 
You know, the lion is the king in the jungle, but the lion is not the longest, the biggest, the strongest in the jungle. What makes the difference between the lion and other animals is the attitude. And when you read the Bible, you begin to understand that you are a son of God. You are more than conqueror. You, you came here to be a conqueror. You came here not to be a victim, but to bring influence. You came here to influence the world and to do great things in this world. You will see yourself differently, and you can achieve everything you want to achieve according to the inspiration you'll be receiving from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also, I want to talk about harmony. You know, when we hear from God. The Spirit of God will be speaking to you and you will pick it from your conscious mind. But if in your subconscious mind you have different information, those information will be fighting the voice of God and you will not be able to achieve anything. Because your subconscious mind controls your habits. Your habits controls your action and your action controls the result you will get. Hallelujah. So you have, you have to download the Word of God like never before. I, I, I want to challenge everybody this year to be working with your Bible, with your app everywhere. Anytime you feel like to check something inside, just check something in the Word of God because we were designed to work with the Word of God. We are sons of a God. We were created by dust. And the dust, the Lord breathing, here we are. And the Lord is asking us just to come back in this program, His Word, His will. Because that's the way we were designed to work and to have victory, to have success. To be above of all circumstances. Hallelujah. And I believe this is our responsibility because sometimes we try to be more spiritual and we try to pray and do all kinds of things. But we forget that the power of the mind is very important if we can use our mind to have this word of God downloaded inside of us. We will be in harmony when the Lord will speak to us. We will pick it from the conscious mind and we will have the same information in the subconscious mind. And we will have enough energy to act on it and we will receive the result we want. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. I love that. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, Amos. Amen. Amen. Awesome, awesome. You see, uh, the whole thing bordered all down, all the preaching, all the things we heard from the first lady to the, the last man, all boils down to the word of God. Amen. Amen. By renewing our mind. You know, renewing our mind. You know, the Bible says when one is in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, all things are and everything become new. That means your old life is gone. You cannot match your old life and your new life together. So you have to work with the new life Christ has given to you. So in that way, that is how you know Christ. Because when you try to put your old and new life together to work with Christ, you can never have understanding of Jesus Christ. So that old life has to go and you walk on the new life he has given to you. And walking with that new life, according to what you have just said, is renewing your mind by reading the word. You have to study the Bible every day. You need to just read it. Don't, it's not about, I feel like reading, I don't feel like reading. Some people, they read their Bible when they are in problems. They don't read ordinary days. They just read their Bible when they are in problems, you know. But you need to study the word. That is where you will know your God and discover whom God is. And that is where you also, you will discover yourself. So now you see, it is when you read that word, then your mentality will begin to change. Because the word of God will begin to work on your mindset. And now you begin to think along just as the word has said to you. You begin to think like Jesus. You see now the wisdom of God will now come and you begin to reason the same way God wants you to reason. So when you are making decisions, you will not make decisions out of fear. You are making decisions based on the word of God. So decision to live every day for him, you, you, are, you make that decision based on the word 
of God. So it is very, very essential for every one of us to take this. This is our food. We feed our body with food. But this is the spiritual. This is really actually what we need. This is what will save us. Not the food we eat every day or drink. This really is what will save our life. The word of God. Because out of that word, God brought you out. And God is not saying go back to that word to build your life. So that is why he said, every word that I give will not come back to me void. Without accomplishing the purpose which I send it out for. And that thing that pleases me. So if your life pleases Jesus, his word that he sent forth to you will definitely accomplish. Amen. So this is what you need to do every day of your life. To live a life, a life that is so sweet, that is so pleasant before him. That every day of your life, Jesus will have reasons to rejoice with you. That everywhere you go, you are displaying Jesus, not just yourself. Even when people see you, before you introduce yourself, they have seen Jesus in you already. Even with your speech, people will know where you are coming from. You know, because when you speak, you will not go about blabbing. You know what you are saying. Because that thing has become already real on the inside. Look, if you don't put the word in here, it's not going to come out real from you. So you just have to first download it inside here. So when you are in need, you pull it out and it becomes real. So when you begin to speak, now you are speaking like your God. Because you are created in his own image. Amen. Because the abilities that God has, he has given you that same ability. Ability to prosper, to achieve. It's already in us. It's just that we sometimes we don't look at those things. We are just overwhelmed sometimes with circumstances or with what people say. Look, everyone will not be your friend. They will not love you. Jesus loves you. It's enough for you. That is enough to carry you because you cannot please everybody, but you please your God. And you know as you please your God, do not step on other people's toe. That is it. So you respect people. You you know, respect yourself in such a way and carry yourself in that manner, in God's image. And you respect people also around you. God loves you so much. He has a good plan for you. And the plan he has for you is not the kind of plan the man will have for you. So you have to be in that plan. And if you are not pleasing to him, if you are not pleasing to him, you are going to hinder his plan for your life. So you must remain every day pleasing to Jesus. And the only way you can do that is living by the word of God. That this word will become something you it. You yearn after it. Something you desire that you cannot really do without. That you cannot even leave your home without reading the Bible. Not praying or communicating with Jesus. You do that every day. You don't need someone to remind you. Just like what he said. He said we have, you know, you know, just like he make reference, like he make an example of the little baby being programmed. Most of us, we were programmed. You understand me? We were programmed to live some certain way, to think some certain way. We were programmed. We were programmed to see some situation in our families and we think, oh, this this is how God wants us to be. No, but now that we are in Christ, those things change. Amen. So we do not need to think that same way again. I used to tell people, I said, look, now you are responsible for yourself. It's no longer your parents. You are responsible. So even if your parents have programmed you to walk in one direction with one deaf ear, now Christ has come. And both ears are open. So you are, you are now responsible for yourself. So whatever decision you make now, you are making decisions, not just for yourself, but for, for those that are following, those that God has placed behind you. Those are the decisions you make because you are no longer selfish. So now when you make decisions, you begin to think of others that are behind you. Because now the life you have is not just for you. You are not living for yourself. You are living for Jesus because through you, Jesus, others will come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's take the word of God. Let's take it as a first priority in our life. Let's every day, let's feed on it. I tell you, if you feed on the word of God, I tell you, it's so powerful. Just as Hebrews 4.12 says, his word is powerful. His word is living and powerful. I tell you, it's something you have to desire. Say, God, make your word alive in me. So, because when the word is alive in you, whatever situation you speak into, and that thing will obey Jesus. Amen. Because you carry that same power. Amen. So, let's wake up. Let's be that this year. You know, we know the word of God has come to us this year. A year of open doors. A year of open doors. The doors will not just open and will walk in. The doors will open for those who are fully prepared. Who are fully prepared for it. That is whom the door will open to. The door is not going to open to everybody here. It depends on your step, on, how, on your stand, on what you do. And how you feed yourself daily. 
Amen. So if you have 24 hours and you feed yourself just two hours a day, don't expect any door to be open. You need to go deeper and ask God to take you deeper and ask God to change your mindset. You know, before I used to see some certain things, I would say, oh, I cannot afford it. I cannot afford it. You know, one time I was working with my daughter because every time she wants something, I said, no, no, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. I don't know that thing was really getting into her. You know, we're just walking one day to church, and she asked me, say, Mom, is five tele big? I said, no, it's small money. Is 50 tele big? I said, for you, it's big. For me, it's nothing. He said, what of 100 tele? I said, it's big for you. For me, it's nothing. Then he began to ask, say, what of 200? I said, for me, it's nothing. For you, it's big. He said, but yet you say you don't have it. You don't have money. So when she said that thing to me, and that thing really struck me like that, I said, wow, I should be careful of what I tell my daughter. You know, now she's saying, if I say 200 lira is nothing to me, why is it that every time I'm saying I don't have the money to get her that? I don't have the money to get her that. You know, I told her, you know, that day, I didn't know really what to tell her. I just said, shut up your mouth. We are going to church. Because... <laughs> How can I explain that? I find myself I was guilty. I said, shut up, Matt. We are going to church. <laughs> so later, when I related this to Pastor Godwin, he said, I told you, you don't speak where these kids are. Don't ever say, I don't have it. We cannot afford it. Don't ever say that. You know, sometimes you go to the market, you see the quality stuff, you want to go for the cheaper one because you think you don't have enough. Now you eat that cheaper one and tomorrow you have stomach problem. You go and buy, <laughs> you go to pharmacy and buy drugs. You know, the money you spend in buying drugs, if you have bought the right one, you will not have that problem. We all have that mindset before. You know, we say we want to manage life. I'm managing, I'm managing. Let's stop managing and look that we are not to be managed. We are not to manage life. God has so much blessed us. And there is nothing he cannot provide. It's just for us to change this, our mind. We have to switch it. We have to change it. Change our thinking, knowing that there is nothing God cannot offer. Because those people that are eating that uh, organic, organic, they don't have two heads. You know, they don't have two heads. They don't have Jesus. I have Jesus. Even though, because this organic has become a big, big, a big deal now. Back home in Africa, we're eating organic chicken, organic uh, carrot, everything. Because from your backyard, you just pick it and cook it. It's organic, you know. But now, it becomes so big. So organic is meant for the rich people who say that you cannot eat organic egg. You can eat organic. Some of those organic eggs, they are not really organic. May God help us. Amen. <laughs> they are really not. Amen. Amen. So let me just encourage you with this scripture while we close. Let's see. Um, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Can someone read from another translation for me? Can someone read from another translation? Isaiah 43 verse 4. Amen. Amen. Can someone read another? Is that another translation? Can someone read again for me? What do you have? Amen. Amen. You see, this is the word of God. This is what, this, there is no lie in this thing. He said, because you are precious in my sight. So you are so precious. You are not just warm. Don't let anybody put you down. You are precious. He said, and I have honored you. Not I'm going to honor you, I've been honored. You know, he said, I have honored you. And I'll give nations, even men for your life. You know, this talk about how much God has so much loved us that there is nothing he cannot bring to us if only we will have understanding of him. 
if only we will have the revelation of him, if only we will allow him to lead us every day of our life. Because as he leads us daily, he begins to reveal himself to us more, more. As you go with him, every time you go for each step, you begin to know him more. Each step he takes you deeper, he opens up to you. Each step, every step you take him, God opens us to you. Amen. And, you see, and that is how you get stronger in your faith. And you can now see that you, before who cannot believe for just 10 tellers, you can believe for a thousand lire. And you wonder, how did I come to this level? You came to this level because you became more hungrier than the way you were before. So I want to encourage every one of us that we get more hungry this year. We didn't just say, okay, the prophecy has come. Okay, let's we, we, we open doors. We walk through the doors. No. It is those who are really serious with God. We walk through those open doors. Amen. I pray that this thing will be in our mind at every day, this year, every day, that as we carry ourselves every day, that we will live in this cautiousness, Lord, that we will not miss what the Lord has prepared for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we blessed today? Yeah. Are we blessed today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Believe me, I am so blessed. I am so blessed. And I thank God for, for these graduates. And we, man, you guys are hot. You guys are really hot. You are hot. Amen. And we thank God for your life. And we just thank God for increase. Now you are out of school. Just keep the fire burning. Amen. Just keep the fire burning. Amen. Keep serving. That is how the fire will keep. <laughs> when you keep serving and you remain faithful, then the fire keep burning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you, Jesus.